some shit there, gamers. Whoop, whoop. There we go. So today we're going to be smashing some clear coat down on this Ford Focus. Winning blue 27A or 27A winner. So whatever. It's just a blue Ford Focus. So today, this is, yeah, this is the exciting thing. We have the Black Mamba. Black Mamba, baby. So it's the NSI Water Supernova. And it's the LS400, which is the HBRP version. All that aside, it's nearly 4 o'clock. I'm going to go home soon. I'm going to be doing a little bit of overtime to get this job finished off. So... I'm not standing around talking shit to a camera. I'll be spraying shit and talking shit to the camera instead. But man, I tell you what, like, I used this gun for snake mode last night on a Holden Commodore use that I sprayed. And I was just blown away by how good it is. <laughs> like, it's a HDLP. HDLP is not meant to spray this good. The Velvet and Starter take VLP, I think, anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like the daily refinishing, perfect, perfect setup. Um, you know, nice and efficient. I actually better give this a tack there. Okay, these blends, mainly. Oh, that's feeling good. That's feeling nice and clean, baby. You can just feel the um, the grit under the tack rag sometimes. You can just be like, yeah, I'm gonna get a few bits of, bits of dust in this job. But this one feels clean. And you know what's probably gonna happen? I'm probably gonna get dust all throughout now. So that eh? I've already found one there. I mean, this quarter panel, I won't be surprised. A bit of stuff does flow out um, from the inside. That's all good. It's just part of the trade, mate. Um, this setup, which is the LS instead of the WS, it just feels a bit more natural to me as well. I, I, maybe I've actually got some sand opened up a little bit more, in fact I do, than what I had on the WS. I used to spray the WS at one and three quarter turns out on the sand, whereas this one here I've currently got it at two turns out. I guess that you know, opens the fan up just slightly and maybe allows you to go a little bit closer because the fan's up bit bigger. Alright, so that's one coat on all the exterior panels. I think we put two just here. I oh, can't forget this one either, can we? Um, yeah, I'll put just that extra coat just around where you step into the car where you've got to get dust and more likely get scratched but one coat's going to be fine for the inside of the doors and that's what I'm going to do now I'll get a coat on the inside and finish the outside off so it's a little bit colder at the moment it's probably, I don't know, I'd guess 15 degrees Celsius outside ambient temperature but I do have the spray loose set to 30 degrees but yeah, I do just like to warm the clear up in the colder mud. A couple of reasons for that. This boot here is starting to drop stuff from the roof. It happens around this time of year, every year in this boot, because I've, I've said it, I've said it last year to you guys. My long term viewers will probably remember, but inlet for this spray booth is on the inside of the workshop. Most other spray booths, the inlet where, the, where all the air comes in from is outside. It's, it's sucked in fresh air from the outside, but this spray booth is sucked in dusty workshop air. So what ends up happening around this time of year is these filters are just full of fog dust and um, primer dust. And then as soon as we hit bake, it must rattle loose and then end up in our job and create and look like little bits of silicon the whole way through your job. 
So the only real workaround I know is to make sure that your clear coat is just about cut dry before you even hit bake or even turn the boots off. So it's a, it's a bit frustrating and annoying that we have to do that, but it is what it is. Yeah, so as I was saying, that's actually another reason that I do like to heat that clear up. Because um, if I don't, and it's, it's like it's 4 o'clock in the, in the evening or afternoon now. So if I was to go and leave here, you know, 10 past 4 or whatever, um, my boss would come and turn the boots off and I would have little bits of silicon all the way through the whole way through the job and there's the dust landing from the roof. So, I don't know that. He wants to come in the next morning after trying a nice job to come in and it's ruined. <laughs> That's why I want to heat it up. Get that paint drying as fast as possible. I use fast hardener. So the clear coat I'm using is stand-up standard clear as usual. I still quite like this clear coat. I mean it's not the best I've used but at the end of the day it's um, pretty good value I think. You know like it's not the best. It's actually Technically, it's probably actually the worst stand up brand of clear. It's the worst, the cheapest one they do. I mean, if, if you grade quality on price, then yeah, it probably is their worst clear, but it's still stand up branded and it, um, it does the job. It's just a bit thinner. I prefer my HS and low DOC clears, but at the end of the day, they come with a price. I'm more than happy to save the boss a few bucks by using a cheaper clear and at the end of the day this clear coat is better than what probably better than what's on the all the cars we're using anyway so you know there's no use in putting too good of a clear coat on cars like this you know but it's actually getting that that finish quite nicely I think getting that, that factory feel it's not chewing through too much material I don't know if you guys can tell, but the you know, spray to me seems a lot lower than when I was using the WS Supernova Lotus Edition. Let's get these jams all done first. Actually, I might do the front jam, then the fender, and the rear jam, then the quarter, or something like that. Whatever. All we need is a nice wet coat of clear over everything. Doesn't matter how you get there. So yeah, setting just in case you miss them. Uh, two bar pressure, two turns out on the stand. So you wind that stand right in, then come out two turns and full fluid. So yeah, anyone else out there in spray paint or land who has a Supernova LS, let me know. Let me know, do you use it for clear coat or do you just use it for base coat? Do you use it for waterborne? Do you use it for solvent base coat? Do you use it for HF clears or MS clears or hybrid clears, which is what this actually is. This is like a mix between HF and MS. That's what they tell me anyway. vehicles look like show cars we just need, need to make them look like they haven't been in an accident you know you've got to make them look like they look like before they got into an accident yeah make it look like the rest of the car you know and we're just 
not going to have enough. That's one liter of clay coat over this job. And that quarter panel actually came up cleaner than I'd expected, which is good. As I say, sometimes you do get a bit of stuff blowing out. That's gonna do it. That should melt in up there. Yeah, loves it, baby. Loves it. I'd like to give that a bit more of a wet up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Why wouldn't you be, mate? Nothing wrong with it. Give that a bit of a wet up. Down here. Yeah, very, very nice gun. Very efficient. It gets that factory finish. I don't, I don't know what else you could ask for out of a spray gun. Black Mamba, baby. Let's have a quick look over that job. And as I say, I'm getting out of here, man. I got people to see it. I'm places to go. Like that really nice tight finish. But it hasn't left me with this great big, thick, chunky, orange peely finish like some of the other HDLB guns do. I can see myself um, using this gun quite a lot to be honest. I really can. I'm actually surprised how clean this first quarter panel came up. I've done these kind of jobs before and you just get stuff blowing out all over the place but that's actually quite clean there's one or two here or there but that's um that's quite a nice job i'm pretty happy with it i'll see you in the next one get out there and paint some shit get them out Woo!